Are you ready to do another epic MCU ranking? Wait, we're doing another MCU ranking? Are you serious? <laughs> what? Hey again guys, you may recognize Stefan Mach from any of the recent Marvel videos we've been doing or of course the other MCU epic ranking 2017. You can check out the link right there on Stefan's head. Right here. And you can also check out Stefan nowhere else but my channel. <laughs> Maybe sometimes our friend Anita, Star's yeah. channel. Check out that link right there also. And now let's do our <laughs> MCU epic ranking 2018. All right, so let's kick it off with number 18, which we put as Thor the Dark World. Yeah, Thor the Dark World is, unfortunately, it's just such a hokey movie compared to the rest of the Marvel movies. Yeah, and it's one, like, especially after Thor Ragnarok coming out, like, in retrospect, it's, like, really pales in comparison to that. By comparison, so yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I had it even lower. It's an important story because it does actually give everything in the history of the MCU prior to Captain America. But it's a hard watch. Yeah, Malekith is probably, it might even be the weakest villain. Absolutely. Of any of the Marvel villains. Iron Man 2. I will say that it does introduce a lot of characters that are vital to the mm -hmm. complete story arc. Black Widow, that's Black her first Widow appearance. Black Widow is definitely first appearing yeah. in there. You're really getting to see Nick Fury for the first time beyond yeah, just that short true. scene. War Machine's great, but yeah. he's he's still kind of an eh character. Like, he doesn't do any, like, he should have died in Civil War. He should have died. Probably, but I also have been, like, waiting forever for them to finally utilize him. That's true. They, and they and barely they, utilize him in Avengers 2. Whiplash is, like... Like, he is kind of a lame villain, especially yeah. since he doesn't have any like protective suit really. It's yeah. just, I've got electric wire things. <laughs> but I do really like Sam Rockwell yeah, as course. Justin Hammer. Yeah, I, I kind of wish we could see more Justin Hammer yeah. in some capacity. Thor. Do we now? <laughs> Thor initially put me off because we went from this guy who builds machines to gods in the sky yeah. who travel between <laughs> solar systems, basically. And I was like, it definitely expanded the Marvel Universe tons more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's had So much of it was just in New Mexico with him eating and grunting and not understanding yeah. our society. Yeah. yeah, they do just isolate him here just to play this fish out of water story. I really do enjoy the movie. It's definitely a hero coming of age. Like he's yeah. learning. He's Loki is possibly the best villain in the Marvel Universe and this was his introduction. Definitely one of them. Definitely yeah. one of them. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, um, this is the weird one because it's it feels so completely separated from the rest of the MCU, yeah. other than that little add-on scene with Tony Stark. Now that Civil War brought back General Ross, I was so happy to see that because it kind of connected again. Yeah. Because yeah, once they moved on from Edward Norton, it just had this disconnect. It's really good. It really it's is. It's just that because there's that disconnect and it almost doesn't feel at, like part of the MCU as much. It's not a boring movie by any no. means. I was very pleasantly surprised when I saw in theaters, and mm -hmm. I still love that ending where he's facing off against... Um, Abomination. Yeah. yeah, Tim Roth as Abomination is great. We have the captain himself, Captain America, the first Avenger. I'm big on like World War II movies, so mm -hmm. that's why I really love this one. It, it is definitely cool mm -hmm. to have a period piece movie in the mm -hmm. middle of superheroes. Yeah. yeah, and everyone loves hating Nazis. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it feels more like a human story, and it is really interesting how he is like 
really scrawny and then yeah. they make him buff. <laughs> that was actually really impressive. I looked yeah. at it now in 4K and I'm like, oh, that looks fake as ever. But mm -hmm. at the time, it was really yeah. cool. It's the first time ever where we have a character whose story arc doesn't really change. Mm -hmm. He himself is always about justice and what's right. Yeah. Because you need that superhero somewhere, and Cap is mm -hmm. the perfect uh, yeah. hero for that. He's the ultimate good. But also introduces us to Peggy Carter, who yes. gets a short-run series, which yes. is my favorite Marvel series to date. Mm -hmm. I yes. love Red Skull, and I'm still wondering where the hell he is. That was the introduction of the Tesseract, which is... Oh, the, yeah, the yeah. first Infinity Stone. Yeah. Now, that's a really important part of the story. <laughs> yeah, that's all culminating very soon. <laughs> this has been our MCU Epic Ranking. What's yours? Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And click that bell to be notified of future episodes. So, Iron Man's, like, the best, right? I love him. <laughs> he's great. He's, he's the Marvel Batman. No offense, DC 